Hello, welcome to CADM CNC Gyan Online. This talk is part of a series of lectures on CNC machining from CADM Technologies. You may be a teacher in a technical institution, you may be in industry on the shop floor, you may be an entrepreneur, whatever your role. These lectures are designed to quickly give you basic knowledge of CNC machining, which you can then build upon. This set of eight videos simplify the complex area of CNC technology. These lecture videos extensively use CADM's multimedia CNC education software to bring the shop floor live on your screen. Happy learning. In this lecture, I will be talking about cutting parameters on CNC lathes and their selection. The main cutting parameters are the cutting speed, feed rate and depth of cut. The cutting speed is the linear speed of the tool relative to the part. It is not the same as the spindle speed. The cutting speed is a linear distance measured in meters per minute while the spindle speed is measured in revolutions per minute. The cutting speed is directly proportional to the RPM and diameter at which cutting is being done. The feed rate is the linear movement of the tool measured in mm per revolution. The depth of cut is the depth of material removed in each cut. In turning it is a radial depth and in facing it is an axial distance. The material removal rate is the volume of material removed from the workpiece per minute measured in cc or cubic centimeters per minute. The cutting power is very important because it is the spindle power required to cut the part and the machine's spindle motor must be able to deliver this much power. The power required depends on the cutting parameters and on the strength of the workpiece material. When you rub your palms together fast, you'll notice that they get heated up and we actually do this to get warm when we're feeling cold. This is because of friction and the faster you rub your palms, the hotter they get. Basically, the higher the relative linear speed between your palms, the higher the heat generation. The same phenomenon occurs during metal cutting. The temperature rises as the cutting speed rises. The tool material is designed to work at a certain temperature range. Below this range you are underutilizing the tool and the cycle time will be unnecessarily high. Above this range the tool wear will be too high and you end up with high tool costs and high machine downtime to keep replacing the tool. High cutting speeds and temperature also result in poor surface finish and unwanted uh, metallurgical changes in the workpiece. Cutting speed depends on the RPM and the diameter at which you are cutting. If you are cutting at constant RPM, as you cut at various diameters, the cutting speed fluctuates. So sometimes you are cutting below optimum speeds and sometimes at above optimum speeds that result in high tool wear and poor workpiece quality. This is why it is preferable to cut at constant surface speed, also called constant cutting speed or CSS. This is how CSS works in facing. You can see that as the tool moves towards the axis, as the diameter reduces, the spindle RPM rises so that the cutting speed is constant. Here is the same animation in slow motion. This video shows constant surface speed on the machine. You can see and hear the RPM increasing as the tool moves towards the axis each time. The machine changes the RPM automatically according to the diameter based on a command in the CNC program. The problem with constant surface speed is that near the axis the RPM becomes extremely high, more than the machine's maximum limit. 
For example, at a cutting speed of 250 meters per minute, at a diameter of 10 mm, the RPM will be 8000 and at a diameter of 1 mm, it will be 80,000 RPM. The machine may only be capable of 4500 RPM. So, when you give a constant surface speed command, you also specify a limit of the spindle speed, which is called the limiting spindle speed. In turning, the surface finish on the part is determined by the nose radius of the tool and the feed rate. The higher the feed rate, the poorer the finish and the larger the nose radius, the better the finish. The R max or maximum roughness height can be theoretically calculated using this formula. The actual roughness will also depend on the tool wear and vibrations while cutting the part and will usually be different from the theoretically calculated value. The RA or mean roughness height is calculated roughly using this formula. This animation shows the effect of feed rate on surface finish. The part on the left and on the right are both cut with the same nose radius. The part on the left is cut at a higher feed rate and therefore has a poorer finish. The part on the right is cut at a lower feed rate and therefore has a better finish. You will also notice that the part on the left is done faster because of the higher feed rate. Tool wear is the erosion of material from the tool. It changes the shape of the tool cutting edge, increases cutting forces, results in poorer accuracy and surface finish on the part. These are some types of tool wear. Flank wear, the picture in the middle, is the most common. As you can see, it makes the cutting edge more blunt, resulting in higher cutting forces and changes in part dimensions. Built up edge is the deposition of workpiece material on the cutting edge of the tool. It is not actually tool wear, but its effects are the same as tool wear. The deposited workpiece material becomes the cutting edge. So the cutting forces become high and dimensional accuracy and surface finish are poor. This video shows built up edge while turning an aluminum part. In the first cut, the surface finish is good because the cutting edge is new. In the second cut, built up edge is formed and you can see the poor surface finish as a result. Tool life is the cutting time for which the tool is usable. Usable means that the tool is giving you parts within tolerance limits with acceptable surface finish and without cutting forces and vibrations becoming too high. The end of tool life does not mean that the tool is actually broken. For example, you might have to change the cutting edge when the flank wear becomes a certain value. Cutting parameters decide the part quality, proper chip breaking, tool life and tool cost. It is therefore very important that you select the correct cutting parameters that suit the operation, the tool material and workpiece material. Here are a couple of examples of improper cutting parameters. This video shows chips not being broken properly because the feed rate is too low for the insert being used. This video shows chips being broken properly, which means the correct feed rate is being used. Every cutting tool manufacturer has cutting parameters tables in uh, tool catalogs. To decide cutting parameters for an insert, we just refer to the catalog of the manufacturer of the insert. This chart, for example, is for Tegu Text catalog for turning inserts. 
To understand this explanation, you will need to remember some concepts that were covered in the earlier lecture on cutting tools like negative and positive inserts and insert grade. First decide on the insert style, whether you want to use a negative or positive insert. A negative insert is stronger but also results in higher cutting forces. So you would use it when taking heavy cuts or interrupted cuts on a part that is held firmly and can withstand high cutting forces. A positive insert is weaker, sharper and results in lower cutting forces. So you would use it on a part that is not held firmly, is likely to bend or has thin walls. Based on negative or positive, look at the N or P rows in the first column. Now decide on the application, roughing, medium machining or finishing. Medium machining is merely roughing with a smaller depth of cut. Based on this, look at the F, M or R row in the second column. Now decide the depth of cut that you want to use and look at the corresponding row. If you want to use a depth of cut of 3 mm for example, you would look at the row 2.5 to 4. Now decide in which category your workpiece stability and machine condition falls. Best, normal or poor. Best would be if the machine is in good condition and the workpiece is held rigidly, is not likely to bend, has no scales, sand inclusions or blow holes. Poor would be if the machine is in bad shape, vibrates a lot and the workpiece is not held rigidly, is very long or has thin walls or is a casting or forging with scales and sand inclusions or has a non-circular cross section which involves a lot of interrupted cutting. Normal would be between best and poor. You finally now get the grade and chip breaker geometry that you must use for the operation and the corresponding cutting speed and feed rate. In the fifth column, row number one is the first choice and row number two is the second choice. Ideally use the first choice or if you do not have it on your shop floor, use the second choice. The highlighted rectangle on the chart shows an example for cutting 0.45% plain carbon steel. We want to use a negative insert, do medium machining with a depth of cut of 3 mm and the machine and workpiece stability are normal. We therefore use an insert of TT8125 grade with a PC chip breaker a cutting speed of 280 meters per minute and a feed rate of 0.35 millimeters per revolution. These are the key messages from this lecture. These are the topics that we covered in this lecture. I hope you found this talk useful. If you have any questions about CNC machining, please call me on the CNC Gyan helpline.